Okay, so let's actually do some coding questions now um, with some actual data. We've done the theory. So I've got here the cost of X of some diamond rings, and we've got these four, five values here that are all pretty large. And you'll see in a second that the numbers you have to deal with get a little bit more complicated. So I've said we're going to code our variable using the following. So to get a new value Y, you're going to subtract a thousand from these and then divide it by 10. So you'd have 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And when you divide it by 10, you'd get one, two, three, four, and five. So what I'm going to do on my calculator is I'm going to just find out for the y values, I'm going to find out what the, um, the, the mean and the standard deviation are. So for the y values, the mean is going to be 3 and the standard deviation of y is 1.4142136 blah blah blah. Okay, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and find the mean and standard deviation of the rings. of the rings or the ring prices. Well, I now actually can find out, if I want to find out what X bar is equal to, I know that Y bar, which is three, is equal to X bar minus a thousand divided by 10. So I'm gonna undo that coding by doing three times 10 and then adding on a thousand. When I do three times 10, I get 30. When I add on a thousand, I get 1,030. So 1,030 is the mean price. Now for the standard deviation, this won't affect it at all. So for the standard deviation, I'm just gonna have that your 1.414 is just going to be equal to x, uh, sorry, standard deviation of x divided by 10. So I'll multiply it by 10, and I'll get that the standard deviation is 14.14, and that's actually going to be in pounds, really, isn't it? So what I can do here is I'll put that pound symbol at the beginning. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm just going to show you how this looks on the calculators. So I've already typed in the data for both of them. Let's go to the camera. So for the original ones, this is for the X bar values that we've got here, you can see that we got the average was 1,030 and that we got 14 pound, 14 pence for the value of the standard deviation. And you can see this was for the non-coded data, we've got that the average was three and that the standard deviation was 1.41. And I'll just go back so that you can have a look at what the data actually was for both of them. Let's go back here. So you can see you've got the one, two, three, four, five data, and then you've got the actual true values of the data here. So the coding just allows you to deal with numbers more simply. Kind of seems a bit crazy when you've got calculators, but this is something that um, does make calculations for computers a lot quicker to do if you're doing lots of data processing. So this question, we're not going to do the whole thing. We're just going to do the easy looking parts of it. We're not going to do all of A, B, C, D and E. I've said suppose that we've worked these out already. All they ask for you to do is to find the mean, the standard deviation, the median, the lower quartile, the interquartile range. And it says give a reason why oh, we don't have to do that for this next part. So it says for part F, the person timing the exam made an error and each student accidentally took five minutes less than the times recorded above. The table below summarizes the actual times. So what they've done is they've taken the original times and they've subtracted five. So I guess if we were going to do some coding, we could have said that the new time was equal to the old time, subtract five. And it says, without further calculations, explain the effect this would have on each of the estimates found in A, B, C, D. So what would happen to the mean? Well, the mean would decrease by five. The standard deviation, would it change? Nope. Standard deviation is the same. The median is also going to decrease by five. The lower quartile is going to decrease by five. These are all measures of location. But the interquartile range is a measure of spread, so the interquartile range is going to remain the same. Okay, nice easy question there. Obviously, if there was something in front of the T, these ones would change, but there wasn't. Okay, so it says here from the large data set, data on the max data on the maximum gust, G naught, is recorded in Luchars during May and June 2015. 
The data was coded using h equals g minus 5 over 10 and the following statistics found. Calculate the mean and the standard deviation of the maximum gust in knots. So the first thing that we're going to try and do is we're going to try and find out the mean of h and we're going to find out the standard deviation of h. And then we're going to do the ones for g for the second part. So the mean of h they've already told us is g. The standard deviation, they've given us this weird thing. Now, hopefully you remember from a few pages up when you're looking at the variance. The variance has got this alternative form, and I believe that it's actually in the formula book. If I can find it, here it is, the bit I've got in the purple box. It's the SXX divided by N, and in this case, it's going to be SHH divided by N for the variance. So let's get right back down to the question. The variance is going to be SHH divided by N. So that's 43.58 divided by 61. And so the variance of, sorry, the standard deviation of H will be 43.58 divided by 61. And I will square root that to get the standard deviation, which is 0 0.845. 0 0.845. So what we need to do now is find out what g bar is going to be. Well, we know that h bar is g bar minus 5 over 10. So I'm going to do 2 multiplied by 10 plus 5 to find out what g bar is. So that's going to be 25 knots. And I know for the standard deviation that the standard deviation of h is just going to be the standard deviation of g divided by 10. So if I want to find out the standard deviation of g, I'm going to do the standard deviation of h, and I'm going to multiply it by 10. So it's just going to be 0 0.845 times 10, which is 8.45 knots when multiplied by 10. Okay, so we are nearly there. I'm going to just do one final example that we've got here, because it's got some interesting bits at the end. It says here that a company manager is investigating the time taken in T minutes to complete an aptitude test. The human resources manager produced the table below, I've printed it above, of coded times X minutes from a random sample of 30 applicants. So we know there's 30 of them, that's gonna make it a bit easier. First of all, we wanna use linear interpolation to estimate the median of these coded times. So let's just go ahead and do that nice and quick. We're gonna do the cumulative frequency down here. So it's going to go 3, 18, 20, 29, and 30. So we know that for the median, we're going to say it's 30 divided by 2, which is the 15th. So I'm going to do that same process as before. The 15th one is going to be somewhere inside this group that we've got here. So it's taking us from the 3rd to the 18th. We're looking for the 15th, and that group takes us from 5 to 10. So this is where we think that median is going to be. So the median, Q2, is going to be 5 plus the fraction on the top. So that's 3 to 15 is 12 over 15 plus 12 over 15 multiplied by how wide the bottom is. And the bottom is 5 wide from 5 to 10. So let's just quickly figure out what that is. So let's do 5 plus 12 fifteenths of 5. 5 plus 12 fifteenths, whoops, of 5, and we get 9. So an estimate for the median is going to be 9 minutes. Part B, it says estimate the standard deviation of the coded times. So it's an estimate because we've got some summaries with the midpoints and things. But to find the standard deviation, I'm going to use this data that I've got here. I'm not going to bother putting any of it in the calculator. First of all, I'm going to find out what y, um, what x bar is going to be equal to. I'm going to do the sum of Fy divided by the sum of, by how many there are. So it's going to be 355 divided by 30, which is 71 over 6. So we know that the standard deviation of these x values is going to be the mean of the squares, so that's your 5, 6, 7, 5 over 30, minus the square of the mean, so that's 71 over 6, all squared. So that's 5, 6, 7, 5 over 30, 5, 6, 7, 5 over 30, minus 
71 over 6. All squared. That's correct, isn't it? And we get that that is 7.01. 7.01 minutes, and that's to two decimal places. Part C. The company manager is told by the human resources manager that he subtracted 15 from each of the times and then divided by two to calculate the coded times. Calculate an estimate for the median and the standard deviation of t. So what did he do to get the x values? To get the x values, he subtracted 15 from each of the times and then he divided by two. So that's how the coding happened. So we're now gonna try and find out the median and the standard deviation. So for this part C, to find out what the median is going to be, we're going to double it and add 15. So the median of T is going to be the median of X. We're gonna double it and then we're gonna add 15. So that's 18 plus 15. Oh my gosh, I can't type. So which is 33 minutes. And for the standard deviation, this bit isn't going to affect it at all, is it? So the standard deviation of x is going to be the standard deviation of t divided by 2. So the standard deviation of t is going to be 2 times the standard deviation of x, which is 2 times 7.01, which is just 14. I'm just going to go 14.0 minutes and I'll do it to three significant figures in case I'd done any rounding errors from earlier on. Okay. It then says that the following year the company has 20 sorry, the following year the company has 25 positions available. The company manager decides not to offer a position to any applicant who takes 35 minutes or more to complete the aptitude test. The company has 60 applicants. Comment on whether or not the manager's decision will result in the company being able to fill the 25 positions available from these 60 applicants. Give a reason for your answer. So the person that they want to, they won't take is if they get 35 minutes or more to complete the aptitude test. And remember this 35 minutes, is this X or is this T? Well, it's the true value, it's T. So we're gonna see what's happening here. We're gonna find it for the X values. So T is 35. Let's figure out what X is. It's going to be 35. We're going to take away 15 and then we're going to divide it by two. So it's going to be 10 minutes when coded. So if they get less than 10 minutes, they've said that they will offer the position to that person. So they will offer positions. if 10 minutes, if less than 10 minutes in the coded times. So let's go back to the coded times. In the coded times that we've got here, how many people were less than 10 minutes? Well, less than 10 minutes is this. So 18 out of 30 people got less than 10 minutes here. So we should say, from the table, 18 out of 30 would have been offered the position. But we've got 60 applicants, not 30, we've got 60 applicants. So with 60 applicants, we can do 18 over 30 times 60, which you can pretty much just do in your head because of the numbers that you've got there, is 36. So with 60 applicants, 36 should be expected to complete in under 35 minutes and be offered a position. Okay, let's have a look and see if we got all of this right. So we've got the answer here of nine for the median 
and 7.01. And then we've got the 14 and we've got the 33 for the median. Good. And then for the last bit, um, less than 35 minutes is 18 over 30, so 36 applicants. So it's likely that they will fill all 25 positions. Oh, I don't know if I got that mark because it said, will they fill those 25 positions? So I said 36 should be completed. I think I should say, so they will likely fill the positions. I didn't answer the question. They will likely fill the 25 positions. I didn't answer it. So you do need to make sure that you actually answer what it is that they're asking for there. Okay, I'm gonna do in the next video some large data set exam questions.